Hello fellow map makers. Oh, welcome to another live map making session with campaign cartographer and profanity software. Uh, hope you're all well. Yes, the bells are going on uh, off in the background, welcoming our map making session as is appropriate. And uh, so we can start nicely on a new map. Hope you all look okay. We are just fine here. It got the first substantial rain at last for a while. Yeah, the, the river next to my house is a river again and not a, a small trickle, which is very good. And hope your weather is doing well for all of you as well. Whatever is appropriate for your area. Today I uh, want to take a look at something we've already uh, looked at before, a while ago, or quite a long time ago, the John Roberts Overland style. I thought it was time for doing another Overland map and some basic stuff again to uh, get something out there for newer users again, you know, going into too much deep uh, stuff for the map. But then again, I can also take the opportunity to show some perhaps a little bit unusual things you want to do with a uh, uh, typical overland drawing style, even if it's not very complicated. It uh, allows you for, uh, allows for some customization and doing some stuff different from how the uh, default style looks. <laughs> yeah, uh, the uh, as everyone says, the bell ringers are very insistent on announcing uh, our nice stream today. It seems to be a uh, especially loud, but uh, it's perhaps only because I've got the window open again and um, the, the wind might be in the right direction to take the sound here. Alright, so let's have a look at the uh, annual John Roberts Overland style and uh, what we can do with it. I'm in my the drawing interface here as usual with a sample map on screen in the same style but I want to uh, create a new one, so what I always do when I create a new map, I go up to the new map icon and click that. I can save or not save my changes as I prefer, and then I get into the new drawing wizard where we set up our new maps. And we are already at the map type. Overland maps, that's where we want to go, and we keep the desired settings myself. Option and click next. And then we are in the long list of uh, I think styles here for overland maps. And I'm off, obviously already at the J John Roberts style, and so I'll just keep that and click next. And despite uh, wanting to make a bit of a smaller map uh, today, I'll keep it at the um, standard uh, Resolution of 1,000 by 800 miles um, and show you a little uh, trick to reduce the map size without changing the bitmap fill styles and symbol scale in a second when I've created the map. But I do not want to click finish yet at this point already. I could. That would keep the blue C background. But I was thinking what if I want to create a, a little bit of a different map where I, my base background is the land and I'm uh, drawing an inland sea. Of course I could do that as well um, with the default method of uh, first drawing the continent around and uh, basically a gap in the middle, but I can also do the following. I can just click next and here I'm just going to change my map background from C medium, which is the, the default bitmap still for that in, in the template. I'll take the land medium one, so I'm just like that, I'm deciding my background will be the land in this map. And that's okay, uh, for now more I don't need to do, so I just click finish, go to the location where I want to save my map, and give it a name, Inland Sea. Here we go, we've got our, our blank map and the grid turned on. I don't need the grip he grid here for the moment, so I'm just going to turn off the grid for now. Now I am uh, do have a fairly large map, or, or default size map, and I've, if I just grab a mountain here, for example, 
you'll see that it's fairly small versus the whole uh, map area. Certainly something you can uh, com uh, comfortably draw in a couple of hours or so, but more than I can do here in the stream. So I want to create a smaller map and here, but I want to keep the relative bitmap fills and uh, symbol scales. So what I'm just going to do, I'm going to say resize drawing area and I reset my dimension from this dialog and I s set it to a, a, qu a quarter of my existing sizes and then I'll just have a smaller one. No big difference here at first, if you can see, but if I grab a mountain now, uh, you'll see I've got a much larger symbol in relative to the uh, map size. What's the difference uh, to creating, uh, setting the size into a, to 250 by 200 in the map wizard? If I do that, the map wizard scales down all the bitmap fills and the default symbol scale to match that size and Oh, basically, I have the same relative sizes again, like I had when I started out here. This way, by using the file resize drawing area, I keep my bitmap fill sizes and symbol scales, just reduce the drawing area. Okay, that was the first thing. And the next thing is uh, now I want to draw my, an inland sea on the map. So I'm got the C button up here, I can click that and if I start drawing I can see I get a smooth C polygon. So I but I'm having a larger C in mind and not, not just a small lake so I'm not don't like the smooth edges quite as much so I do want a fractal version and let's see for that I'm going to go up and right click the default C button, see what other C options I have. And I can see I uh, have some contours for the C in fractals, uh, but the default C tools are all smooth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click advanced, take the C default option, click new and call it C fractal. And I'm just going to change the draw method from path polygon to fractal. And there do I have the tool now with uh, fractal edges. Click OK. And now I can draw my inland sea here in the center of my map. There we go. Let's say this is our inland sea, and but if I take a look, activate sheet effects, let's see that it does not have any effects attached. The style is not really set up uh, to do the seas on top of land, but it's quick and easy to add that, so I wanted to show you that. And I'm going to go back in the sheet list, and there you can see the C sheet is at the end of the list. That's because using the tool just added it uh, to the list. So I'm going to move that up. And basically I just want it here below the land sheet. So that way if I draw land masses afterwards, yeah, I can use them as islands on top of the sea. Okay, so that's good. Let's draw a little bit of land as an island to compare the, the look. So I'm going to go up to the default landmass tool, click the tool, and see that's already a fractal polygon. Draw this here. And if you see that, uh, you can see we um, have several sheet effects here. And I want to recreate these on the C uh, coast. And that's easy. I'll just have a look where my sheet effects are. They are here on the land sheet. Take a look. We've got uh, some glows here. Gonna grab these, copy them from, the, go to the C sheet and paste them in here. Just click apply to see how that looks, and you can see hmm, that is weird. Uh, the blue outline is on the land edge. Well, that's because the direction of these effects is reversed from what what we want, because we are not using them on the land but on the water instead. We just need to reverse the direction. 
of these effects. For that, we'll just click Edit on the Glow and switch from outside to inside on all three of the effects. Well, this one for other way around, from inside to outside. Click OK. And there I do have the same uh, effects on the uh, inland sea coast as I have on the island. Well, that's looking good. That's how I wanted. And uh, I can work on this now. Good. So, the next step is I'm just going to add a few uh, mountains uh, around the map. Just click the mountain dialog and say the sea is mostly surrounded by mountain ranges. As you can see, I've got a group of symbols uh, and hitting the tab, tabulator key, I can switch through the different mountain symbols as I go along. And I, each time I click, come back out of a grabs a random one from the group, so I get a very varied selection of mountains. That's looking pretty good. I want to see a lower one down here. Just build mountain ranges along the edges. Go and some mountains here. As you can see, I've not overlapped everything correctly. So what I'm just going to do now to, or let's, for example, if I also put a mountain up here, see the overlap is not nice between these. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go symbols, sort symbols and map, all of them, D for do it. And now they are sorted correctly. Um, yeah, we got a message there from Vivan. Indeed, the uh, uh, sea doesn't have the black coastal outline here, as the um, uh, the landmass uh, has. That's because the tool doesn't have, have that set up. I could add that, but I'm not so fond of the black uh, of the dark blue outline here at the moment. Anyway, so what I'm going to do for this map is I'm just gonna. Uh, hide the coastline or perhaps I probably should show show you how to set up uh, the same for this tool so uh, let's uh, take a quick look if we uh, go in the drawing tools you see the land, land default tool and there you see it's the has the dark blue outline it's an extra entity properties See, it's got a line width and a, the color 52. It's on the sheet coastline. And what we can do is we can go to the our C frac fractal tool that we set up and add the same extra entity here. So oh, this goes on the coastline sheet, not current properties. Instead, the color 52, border, and fill style solid. Okay, now our tool has the same dark blue outline. And I could, of course, redraw the uh, C, but I want to do instead is I'm just going to say change like draw tool choose our freshly edited drawing tool as so our fractal C and then select the entity we want to change do it and there's our okay but I've uh, tool has done something strange to the the C let's have a look what happened there put the uh, the C on the land sheet. Did I grab the wrong? Did it grab the wrong one? 
or might have been sheet C. Let's try again. Switch to the C as the current drawing tool. Again, change like draw tool. I might have picked the wrong drawing tool, yes, as uh, Sue mentions. Let's try that again. See fractal. Do it. That's better. There is our dark blue outline. Here we go. I was working on the mountains and what I noticed is because my mountain symbols are so large, they extend well beyond the uh, map border and peak uh, off, um, to the side beyond our uh, screen. And I want to change that. Uh, not really necessary if you limit your printing and exporting to the map border. They won't show up anyway, but I just don't like it here at the moment. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use one of the newer uh, tools we have in coming with uh, one of the latest updates, and it's not on the menu yet. It's the um, command called color, the color around the map, and just type that in. And then it asks us for the area, and we want to color, and we want to color the, uh, the map border, so we just right-click to accept the default. And again, to let the program calculate the necessary width. There we go. And uh, see, if we zoom out, it gets a bit smaller because the color extends further, but the screen, the color is now wide enough to hide all the Symbols extending beyond the map border. Okay, so I was uh, still working on the mountains. I now also want to add some hills uh, to further define our layout here. And there we are. That looks pretty good. So next up, I'm probably going to use some rivers um, to, to uh, add the details. And here comes the cat. Okay, so I'm going to use larger rivers here because this is probably relative. This is relative to the map border, the river width, and because we, yeah, it's not very wide at all. I'm just going to add a few here. One down here. And a final one on the other side. And to a side branch of the river down here. And we can also do this here. There we go. And as you can see, I do like to hide my river starts uh, behind the mountain symbols. I always think that looks quite nice and tidy. So it's something I do <laughs> fairly regular, just a little habit of mine. Okay, so we've uh, got the river layout and uh, we could add a few um, terrain features like a uh, greener area around the, the rivers. The grassland terrain tool for that is pretty good. I've used the um, default terrain drawing tool button there. And I'm going to use this to uh, add a fertile area on the river. And what I want to show you is the trace command, just quickly, for those who haven't seen it yet. I'm going to hit T for trace, then select the, uh, air, the entity I want to trace, which is the coastline in this um, case. And the trick is to select the coastline at a point where I want my line to go along. If I picked it down here on the left, that would be a point where I don't want to go it along. 
I want to go it, uh, have it go along here, and that way, if I then click my start point, the line will go in the direction I want. Because it's it's a closed polygon I'm tracing, Campaign Gatherer does not know by default which way I want to go around the entity. And I do that by the clicking the a section that I want my line to run along. There we go. And then I'm just going to finish that. And there's my greenish outline with a nice shading edge fade here again. I'm going to trace my C and then finish this here. Again trace and follow the line. Then here we go. Another one for this river. Trace again. go. Yeah, I think I've not quite hit the coastline with my river. I'm just gonna show you how to fix that in a second. Here we go, refresh, all nice green river valleys. If I zoom in here, yes, other, everything okay. I can see that my line is a bit blurry, that's just because there's a blur effect on there. Uh, it's not on the Line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my line end and just move that with the F9 modi modifier on top of the coastline. Here we go. Hi, Asa. And zoom back again. Oh, actually out. Here we go. So next up I wanted to add a few forests and do some extra work on those because I think they were given a bit of a short shrift in the original uh, style and could use a little bit of updating. And so uh, let's take a look at our vegetation catalog. And here we've got also the different terrains available to place trees and uh, forest tool. Let's grab the forest tool and just say I want to add a forest here in this area. And as you can see, the uh, style just adds a forest fill polygon with a little bit of an edge fade effect on the map. And the way I used to uh, draw these maps is I would just grab some tree symbols and draw them along the edges myself to build a uh, bit better looking tree of a forest like this. But I'm thinking we could set up a tool for that and uh, for that, or at least, oops, set back to normal, uh, use a shortcut here and use the um, symbols along a tool to add forest along the uh, forest edges. Now first up I want to delete these uh, trees again because I'm going to re-add re them with the tool and I could of course uh, just use the uh, erase tool or something but I wanted to show you another quick way to delete symbols in the map that you don't want anymore. Important is to delete all the symbols of the type uh, from the map, no matter where they are. So be careful if, the, if you do that and you have other parts of the map where you don't, do not want to delete them. I go to the symbol, sorry, should do that slowly, symbols, symbol manager, scroll down and here are my trees. I've No, I haven't placed any other yet. I want to remove all the trees, so I select them and choose delete and that way they are gone from all over the map. Basically what I've done, I've deleted the symbol def definition of uh, from the whole map. As each symbol is just a reference to the definition in the map, if I delete the definition, all the symbols are gone. Good, so uh, what I want to do, I want to use a tool to outline the uh, forest with tree symbols. So I'm going to go to draw and choose the symbols along command. And here 
And because I've experimented with that already, I've actually uh, got the settings down pretty much already, but I want to go through them again. First up, I need to load the symbol catalog of the symbol I uh, want to use. And for that, I'm going here to the symbols uh, subfolder of my program data folder for C3+, click Maps. Uh, Jonathan Roberts is the folder where my symbols are in, and then I'm going to pick the vegetation catalog. And here you'll see the different symbols. And for this first, I actually want to grab the pine symbols. So I'm going to choose the first pine symbol as the one to place. And I'll have the check allow random symbol selection from group here uh, active. That means it will pick up any, uh, each time it places a symbol, will pick up one of the first four here of the four pines, because they are consecutively numbered. Though then I can, uh, my tool can vary the size of the symbol according to the place on the line or polygon I'm drawing along, but I do not want to change the scaling here, so I've set everything to 100%. Max symbols to place is just a safeguard against uh, overfilling the map with the symbol, which can crash everything because uh, it's just overwhelms the system. So uh, 1000 is a good, good point there, we'll not get anywhere near there with uh, one use of the command here, so uh, that's safe. A chance to place, I don't want uh, any gaps in the outlines, 100% is fine. Symbol angle, I do want to keep them all at the same angle, basically upright, so I'm going to choose the first one here. Um, not going to invert angle offset or angle, do a random angle. Symbol scaling, I'm going to use the default, that's fine. I can choose of varying the size a little bit of the symbols, but I'm keeping uh, this here. And basically, this is a bit of experimentation here. Um, if I just put this in at uh, uh, default values and then uh, say no overlap. Let's just try that, see how that looks. I'm going to click OK, select the edge of the symbol, and there you see you've got uh, nice pine symbols, but they are spaced out too much. So uh, what I do need, I do need to overlap them and uh, put them closer together. So I'm just going to do undo and draw symbols along again. And I'm just going to do the overlap here. And I think I had, well, let's, let's just, this is a bit of a trial and error, see how this looks, and then try different settings. So let's go through a, a few different ones. Well, that looks, looks already pretty good. I don't need to change any much more there. The overlap value is actually enough. Is that good? Yeah, you could do a little bit more, but I think it's pretty fine. So I've got the uh, tool here. You can uh, we can stay with that if we want to. Um, what I can what I would then do is probably just add a few individual tree symbols around the edges. I'll just grab a few of the deciduous trees closer to the coast here, and leave it at that. Looks pretty good. Oh, if you go in very detailed, you do see a bit of the fade here and stuff. So what we could do alternatively is uh, fill the whole polygon of the symbols. It's also an option. It might get a bit overwhelming on larger maps because there, there will be a lot more symbols. But let's give that a try how that looks. So um, let's first off delete these symbols again. I'm going to use my symbol manager trick again to lead over of them. Then I'm going to go into my symbols along first again, because I do want to save this before I do any changes. So I'm going to save this setting so I can re reload at a later time. And again, I'm in my C3 plus program data folder. And I usually, we've got a system fillers uh, settings here. And I'm going into the annual subfolder, and uh, you can see I've already created one with um, this is with the uh, deciduous trees. So I'm gonna just 
name this pine and have that ev uh, available if I w want to reload it at a later time. But cancel and let's do fill with symbols. No, fill with symbols is the old classical forest uh, drawing tool stuff that uh, takes different symbols and puts them, uh, matches them together. This is something a bit more complicated to set up and not something you can usually do quickly in the map. So what I'm going to do is the, the uh, symbols in area command because that looks very uh, similar to the one we've used before to the symbol along, just that it doesn't work on edge of uh, an entity instead of the interior. So I'm going to grab the uh, pine symbols again. Again, allow the random selection. I've got even more symbols, uh, max symbols here to place. And again, I would want a hundred percent chance. And oh, no offset or anything. You can vary the size a little bit, uh, again, between edge and center. And for my layout pattern, I could choose a rectangular grid that would fill everything very uh, in the same distances, but it will probably look too regular. So I'm just going to grab the uh, random one. And I want to perhaps limit it a little bit to the uh, not to extend too far beyond the edges. Therefore, I'll never place symbols within one unit of the edge. And then I've got the horizontal and vertical distance here. No random variation. Let's just have a quick look how that looks. Grab the polygon. And there's my polygon filled with trees. That might look even better. Quite like that. So I'm uh, gonna uh, do that, grab some symbols again, some individual ones, and there we are. Yeah, good. Um, Yes, uh, as Vivian, mentions, Vivian just mentions in the chat there, the regular pattern works very well with all charts and stuff. I've actually used it for all charts uh, like that before, but for a wild forest like that, uh, it's probably not the best option. So uh, what I also want to know, what I'm going to do first now, I'm going to draw some forest patches. And then I'm going to go in and fill all of these with the tree setting I've created. And here we go. And let's go and draw symbols in area. And what I also want to do is here save the setting again. I'm in the same fillers thing. And I'm going to call this John robots pine fill okay and nice thing here is you can select different objects and fill them all in one go now I'm just gonna grab some individual trees Oops. And symbols, sort symbols and map. This time only by the vegetation layer. And there are my first on the map. What else do we need in the way of vegetation? I would want uh, a little bit of uh, marshes and perhaps uh, farmland in um, specific areas, but for the farmland I should probably first put down some structures, some uh, settlements. So I'm just gonna grab the terrain, the marsh drawing tool and add a few marsh, marshy areas also along the edge of my 
see here. Look, oh, it looks nice. Again, as you see, I'm using the trace tool. Trace the area, uh, the line where I want to f f follow it. We are. Looks good. Then uh, let's take a look here in our uh, terrain. We've got some wasteland terrain. Or oh, let's have a look. What else do we have? For terrain. We have the mountain fill, which we don't need. We do have a bit of a mountain background. We could use that to uh, fill in a little bit darker area behind our mountain symbols. So it's just going to be visible bit where there are gaps between the symbols. It's fine. Don't need much of that. It's just a little bit of color variation in the map. Yeah. See you. If you don't know it's it isn't there you hardly notice. So we could uh, uh because I just like the fill it might not make much sense from the uh, relatively fertile area here but let's just say the mountains there are keeping off all the rain and we have a bit of a desert there on this side of the, of the mountains. All right so it's most of the natural landscape uh, down. Let's load up our structures catalog. And here we've got the nice uh, settlement symbols and let's grab our big city as yes. one of the downsides it's a very large symbol so it might sometimes this can be very hard to, s to place we can of course scale it down a little bit see whether we can put that in somewhere there we go and let's have a look. So symbols and map. Oh, so yeah, I want it to be behind the mountain, which looks nice. Tucked in there. So what we are, well, that shall be our only city on this map. So let's place a town on the other side here. See the, uh, the oh, well, that's, it's, it's, it's the smoke of the chimneys. That's fine if it extends beyond the uh, the coastline onto the lake. There we are. And another one down here. Then a couple villages. We also can overlap them with the map border so we only see part of the symbol. Couple of uh, Hamlets. And the, the fortress is, I think it's a bit too large, overwhelming for this map. But let's put down a castle. These fit nicely on the hill. Some, or no, the castle is, doesn't fit on the hill that nicely. But the towers do. See, so yeah, you can nicely put this on the mountain here. Looks pretty good. And let's put one down here. Looks very nice. And now let's see, oh, we do have some bridges. So let's place a bridge up here. We only have the one direction, but what we can always do, we can uh, mirror the symbol. To have it go in the other way, to mirror a symbol, just right click. Um, click the mirror button here, or also to make it go back to normal again, normal orientation. But again, here I want it in the other 
direction not perfect what it shall do and then I can grab the road drawing tool and just connect our settlements around the lake here the road is going to be a bit difficult it's probably easier to just uh, use a boat unless there are some circumstances here that make travel by boat on this inland sea dangerous it's going to be a fort here no bridge yeah let's have a look is the Road sheet is below the uh, symbols sheet, so they, yeah, that looks good. And actually, makes sense to start on this side of the river, so we don't need to cross the river again there. And also use the F9 modifier to attach it to an existing road leading off the edge of the map here <laughs> okay we want to ruin uh, river wants a ruin in the desert oh, that's actually pretty perf perfect and we have a nice ruin here mirror it again so I actually quite like the mirrored version here nice on the edge of our map into the unknown um, do we have uh, no I wanted to check whether we have a simple version which doesn't have the green unfortunately we don't that's something uh, for an expansion I'm thinking of uh, doing a, a revisit to this style with some updates perhaps for um, a few more symbols if possible problem is that John Roberts isn't available to do more symbols so it's gonna be stuff uh, no, created from the. Oh, okay. I'm. Uh, <laughs> yes, I'm hiding uh, the uh, ruin behind uh, the uh, camera, and there's my ruin there on the top right corner of the map. As you can see, I'm a bit uh, put off by the green uh, surrounding the ruin, but I at the moment don't have a way to hide that. I could probably do some shenanigans with trying to hide them uh, below um, a desert fell style, but it's a bit too far here at this point. I'd rather take a closer look at expanding the style a bit with more options and uh, ways uh, to create the different color versions of the symbols. All right, so we are. We've got that down. Yes, you can see the old uh, line style problem is uh, apparent. That at some points or the pattern we have set up for line styles uh, where there are corners and uh, pieces uh, very short connection between po points the uh, pattern will not repeat quite correctly if I don't usually mind that it's just a brush stroke uh, and that can vary uh, from the cartographer but if you don't like that and want to change that you have a couple options first is trying to remove some notes but that also just often happens to move that uh, a bit at pattern break I tend uh, to find works better is moving the um, notes a little bit or r remove notes from uh, the line is also a good option see like that let's have a look here what we can do that's pretty good one of the more obvious uh, spots. So I have one up here. Let's 
see whether it's oh, looking pretty good. And one down here, or a couple actually. There we are, fixed it. And that seems to be almost everything. Something here, I think, yes. Oh, there's one there behind the uh, town symbol, but that's pretty much hidden there anyway. Though so there's something. Uh, that looks like uh, there's a couple nodes too close together. Look, we move one and we fix the line. <laughs> but uh, as you can see, the uh, problem moves around. If you fix it at some point, you might get problems on in other spots. So another option there is to cut the uh, line into distinct sections. But I'm thinking we're almost there. Let's one more try here and see whether we can Actually, let's try the uh, split version. Just grab the split command, click the line, split it at a straight section, and there we've got it. Good. That's our roads. Let's have a look through our um, Simple catalogs, uh, whether we are missing some, something that we definitely need to put on the map. We've got the, but we don't need any political borders. We've got the rivers, we've got the islands, stuff that's fine. Uh, we're not bothered about a volcano on this small map. So we do have some uh, mesas and crevices, always nice to have, but I think we are good here on this map. Now we've got all the structures as well as the... Oh, one thing I wanted to add, the farmland. I wanted to draw a bit of farmland texture near the settlements. And this one I'm not going to follow along the seashore. Instead, I'm just going to draw this right across here. Yeah, and I like that. Oh, it's looking pretty good. Okay, so next up would be uh, a bit of labeling uh, on the map. Let's uh, have a look here. Oh, our default uh, text is set up. Oh, it gets dark and stormy out there with some rain. Good. So I'm. Uh, Let's put a little bit of a uh, name here for our city. Let's say that's Kilda. Kilda. Place it down and have a look at the sheet effects. Yes, indeed, the sheet effects are set up for dark, dark text. And it's got a white outline. Um, but I'm not super happy with the font and the outlining, so I'm going to work a little bit on that. First off, let's have a look at uh, the, uh, the font. Um, change text properties. Click that, do it. And let's have a look at what we do have in store, uh, available right away. I've got quite a few our styles, but we can also have a look at our, the rest of our uh, installed fonts on the system. And I'm thinking... No, I'm trying to think on a specific map font that I quite like, but I can't quite uh, remember the text, but I know, do know that GSL Ancient is quite nice, so let's give that a try. Yes, quite like that. A bit of a more ancient look. Worn letters. And uh, next up I want to change the outlining a little bit. 
That's mostly because since that font uh, that style was created, we have added another sheet effect. You see, this only has the normal glow. Us in the map style, we also now do have the outer glow, with I th which I quite l I like a bit better for uh, outlining text. Um, need to decrease the range and the blurring of that. So 2.2, that units is fine because you can set the opacity for the gl whole glow here, which I quite like. Let's have a look. Let's turn off the normal glow, do an apply, and you can see it, uh, it gives a more uh, consistent glow around the text. But I think it's a bit too large, perhaps. Let's make that 0.65. The blur is fine. And perhaps a little more, bit more opacity, 85 percent. Yeah, I like that. And then what I then do is I use the extract properties command on the text, and that way all my default text is set to the same size, but th since this is my mo most major city, uh, on the uh, on the map I'll make the text a little bit larger than the rest, so I'm going to use uh, height 4 for the rest of the text. And let's put in some names for other text features. This is castle. Uh, if you've got uh, the alignment of the text at the moment, you've got the insertion point for the text at the bottom right. You can uh, use L for left or C for center to change the horizontal insertion point. And you can use top and middle and bottom to uh, align it to uh, vertically. Go. So put in some names for the smaller let, uh, settlements here. Now send the bottom, there we go. And you can see you can add the, the labels like that. Um, we've got... call this the serpent's ruins, probably the ruins of some ancient serpentine uh, empire or something like that. Certainly something where adventurers go, could go lo looking for some treasure. And what we obviously uh, uh, should put in as a name for our central feature or central C. And I want to make this a little bit different. I know I've labeled structures uh, and sites of interest with uh, black, so I want to uh, do a light blue fitting for the uh, for uh, for the sea. Let's just have a look what we do. That's how we call this. Um, how we, what is this? This Kildas Lake. It look, looks actually more uh, like a. Let's call it St. Kildas Lake. Mid-center, make it nice and large. Here is the central feature of the map. There we are. And what happens, we do get the white outline on the bright blue text, which obviously doesn't really work nicely. So what we need is we need a different sheet effect. And we, if we need a different sheet effect for this text piece of text, we do need a new sheet. So we're going to use the, the move to sheet command, select the lake, D, add a new sheet called text white or text bright for brighter text. 
move it up just below a normal one. There we go. Now we don't have any sheet effect at all, which would already work probably. But what I want to do here is I want to add a bit of transparency. So the text, wherever we put it, will take a bit uh, of the color of the background. And perhaps add a little bit of an outer glow, but in the dark blue. And even blurrier than the one we used on the other text. Look. Um, I think I do need to switch the... Yeah, there we go. Like that. That's looking pretty nice. Okay, so the only thing that's missing is... Uh, some cartouche. So I'm gonna grab the compass here. That's pretty large, so we'll make this a bit smaller. And put it on the, the lake here. And then uh, the scale bar. I grab the scale bar, set it to normal. That will be 100 miles. Oh, that's a bit large, overwhelming for the map, so let's put in half the size. That looks pretty good. Let's put it down here. And then I'm going to grab the uh, text properties again. And let's say this is 50 miles. Oh, let's put it uh, below that, so I'm use the ins top as the insertion point. There we are. We've got a good suggestion there that the uh, the map file should uh, should probably put that on the forum. Please remind me if I forget. I'll uh, see that I do that tomorrow. Because this is came out quite nice. Like it, and I call it finish at this point. And I uh, see. John, nice little map with some uh, custom setup and some uh, special tools we've done. What I've not not covered is taking the uh, the uh, the fill style command and uh, for the fill in air symbols in area command that I use on the forest and made a drawing tool from that. That goes beyond a little bit of the introduction here, but that's certainly something that I would add to a redo of the style. Hope you liked uh, what I did today, uh, and uh, I'm happy to use your own, uh, create your own maps in the John Roberts Overland style, and I'm really happy to see what you create with it, what you come up with. Anyways, that shall be it for tonight. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. Thanks for chatting. And have a nice evening. Bye bye everybody. Until next time.